Hello, this is John Spielman with my video version of column 162. I'm just going to check first that we are recording and that will involve we are good. Um, so I've entitled this Bring Your Own Bottle and Fork and you shouldn't try to have to explain your own jokes but for people who aren't, um, for whom English isn't their first language, bottle is, a, is English slang for courage and if, if you've managed to avoid the glories of UK politics, our great leader Boris Johnson uh, is in big trouble at the moment. He may have gone by the time you read this uh, because during the height of the Covid lockdown they had a party in the Garden of 10 Downing Street, his official residence in London, which he attended, which was entitled Bring Your Own Bottle. And a fork is a fork, either either to eat with or to on the chessboard. Anyway, so I'm sorry to explain my own joke. It's terrible. So I started by saying that years ago, the great Misha Tal uh, said something which is rather important about attacking. They can only take one piece at a time. I don't have the exact quote or when it, where it's from. I don't know which language he said it in, probably in Russian. And um, I, I reached that in a minute and... I've got a game where his opponent attacked a piece and he sacrificed a different one. So we'll start with that. We're in column 162. And basically, I don't really care how they reached it. Um, okay, black is... I thought Bishop A6 was supposed to be the right move, but anyway, black has not done this right. Something's gone very wrong at some point. And here he played... Black played h6, which is sort of a desperate attempt to unpin and hopes to do something working. I don't know why I didn't go knight g4 at once or something. Maybe d5 works, I don't know. Um, but this allowed bishop b6, which is absolutely disastrous for black because obviously the white squares have gone. If pawn takes, he took this bishop. If he takes the other bishop, queen takes pawn with check. Probably leads to mate in a few more moves. This is still what happened. Now you can't take the bishop because of queen g6 and mate next move. Either knight f7 or knight e6 or queen f7. So, and Tal did it this way in fact. And played rook e4 just to bring his rook into the game and the poor guy had to resign. So this was a pretty vicious refutation of when Black rather foolishly um, allowed his, his white squares to be destroyed. And, um, okay, the important thing was that in this position, after h6, Tal didn't do something with his bishop, but he gave, put another piece on prees. And the reason I was showing this was because while I was waiting for Vikanze, it's actually Saturday today, so Vikanze is going to start in um, about well, 40 minutes as we as I as I do this. Um, I happen to be watched looking at this game. Uh, it's a game in Bulgaria. I think they're quite young guys playing in some tournament in Bulgaria. And I was playing through the games thinking, is there anything interesting? There was a game where white played queen h5, check king takes queen, rook h7 mate, which is quite pretty, and I found that later. This one, I don't really care about what's going on, but I do know that here, that bishop d8 was a mistake. And if you're not looking at the board, the moves, then don't. I'll put in replay training for a second. I probably ought to have done it properly. But in fact, white to play has a crushing move in this position. And that crushing move is knight f5, which is a self-fork. It's absolutely devastating. You can't take either knight because f7 goes. Uh, black castled, check. He actually played pawn takes knight. I suppose hoping for queen takes pawn, pawn takes knight, rook takes bishop, which is completely horrible. But not at well it is completely lost but uh after pawn takes knight queen g4 he resigned because it was made next move and there was bishop takes knight pawn takes if you go back with the knight the knight e7 the queen takes queen you take you are protecting the knight but after knight h6 
pawn takes, queen takes, it's mating a couple more moves. So, and of course if king h8 you play knight back or h7 you play knight back to f5 to e7 mate. So um, this was a very pretty game and the thing that I really liked and it's, it's well, quite well disguised here because normally it's not a position where you look for it so much is the move knight f5, the self fork and when I checked uh, where I was watching it, it it took right about a minute to play knight f5 and that was that. Poor Black was uh, KO'd, knocked out, kicked in. I mean, you can try G6, but it's absolutely awful. I thought F5 might be a move. F5 takes, takes. Uh, knight F4 is the end of the game. Or if you go Pawn takes, there's another move. There's Knight Pawn takes, Rook takes here, and then this is the best one. I didn't see this myself. I suppose I would have done in a game. I mean, obviously, Bishop D5 is going to win as well very very clearly but queen takes is even better and there is blood all over the chessboard and it's all very pretty um so that that brought me on to the idea of looking for self forks and i googled um i, I used a search engine which was Go uh, google as you tend to nowadays and I found an article by Simon Williams on Forks and looked through it and there was a game Fischer Tal. So I'll show you that. Um, this is a famous game from the candidates, the one where Tal got a big score against Fischer. And um, here is Fischer playing. I think that's probably a bad move. I mean, look. Bishop d5 is a nice move. Rook a7, takes, takes. I think bishop d5 may be even better than, better than bishop f5. But later what happened was that Tal defended himself rather well. Bishop f4 is a mistake, giving up this knight. And Tal managed to win this, in fact, which is rather impressive. Queen to there. Vicious little move. So at this point, white has play for the piece but nothing absolutely clear and they played some more moves and eventually it got to be better for black so I said I'm not very interested I mean the game is a great game but you know that wasn't the point of it uh, so he went king e2 first so that to get to get Tal to play king d5 so there wasn't a d6 check this happened Round about here he went a3, tried to do this, but I mean Tal obviously was completely on top of the tactics, and now this nice move, and finally b2. Pretty way to finish the game, because obviously if you take the rook, b1 equals queen discovered check. So, I mean just a pretty game. So then I thought... I actually emailed Simon and said, do you know any other examples? I don't think he's got back to me yet. And then I thought, well, why don't I just look for knight f5, knight d5, and I'll give black some Sicilian pawns, d6, e6, f7. And I got rather a big database, actually. I'll show you. Here it is, self-fork. Uh, this is from, this isn't from Megabase. It's the one I use, Twickbase, Mark Crowther's Twickbase. And this is knight f5, knight d5 against d6 e6 f7 and then i added bishop d5 knight f5 against d6 e6 f7 got about 150 maybe half of these the pieces were self-forking and half of these the pawn was moving to fork them and so i picked up a few of them and there's this one um i mean obviously now they're not going to be a big surprise because you know what's going to happen this is actually a theoretical position. Um, now, knight c6 is, a, is basically an opening mistake. You have to, bishop f6 is a reasonable move. Um, this was some game, um, MVL against Votashek. But knight c6 is a mistake, because after knight d5, if pawn takes knight, you play knight takes, bishop takes, takes, and you're basically winning, because well you can see why you're winning so that's a clever little trick 
and after they go bishop d8 you go knight f5 and you are attacking with extreme violence pawn takes takes uh g6 i guess you can just take can you and go 97 check or something Splat your way through rook takes takes take f6 that's the idea so you've stopped him blocking with knight g6 and g6 so bishop f6 knight takes wins and g6 check and actually there was a game a uh, later game subsequent to this through Blevsky's Zuda the black resigned here but this the, the game I've got went like this and now black resigned because obviously he's being splatted in all directions he's not only losing materi material losing the exchange at least but also being attacked violently so that was an opening trap and then I carried on looking for them and I came across this one. This is a game where a much stronger player got splatted by a weak well a stronger player got splatted by a weaker opponent. Sorry, I didn't even really see what was it? It was a Khan, was it? Yeah. It's quite clever. I guess that if pawn takes pawn you go knight b5 and bishop b7 do you or something. Uh, what happens if you go... I haven't even thought about what happens if d takes e5. Um, so let me ask an engine. I'm just going to put that on. So if d5 knight e6 so bishop b3, you can take the queen and take the rook. So fe6, bishop c5, bishop f3, bishop f8, bishop d1, bishop d6. With it. So is that actually okay? That's... So actually bishop f3 is a mistake. I mean, I was just, because the thing is, I was playing these through really quickly, just looking for the self forks. What happened was, knight f5, exclam. I suppose you should have an exclam here. gf5, gf6. You see gf5, you can go knight d5, and you're splatting your way through. It says that bishop e3 actually is okay still. Interesting, bishop e3... Queen e3, bishop h5, says the engine. But now knight d5 is devastating because you are, if you take this knight, if you take this knight, then bishop to here, threatening queen h6, queen d7, and the beautiful queen g5 check. Queen takes queen knight to there, mate. So that was a bit of a shock. Queen back, bishop takes, went knight to there. There are many much unpleasantnesses which could occur if you took this if you took on f5 then bishop b6 would be one winning move followed by queen h6 or something or knight f6 and then queen h6 so yeah so if you took this guy then i presume we play bishop b6 and if queen c8 check here check here and here so, um, nice game. What actually happened was bishop takes c5, knight d7, bishop d4, again teeing up for queen g5, check. Check, and he took it. Well, it's desperate, isn't it? I mean, I understand you're the stronger player and you're cross, but I mean, there's not much point in this really, is there? So, okay. And he resigned. Uh... So that was another one, and I got a couple more. I mean, there are many, many of these. This is a well-known theoretical position uh, in the Sozin, in the Velimirovich attack. And um, basically, you play bishop d5 because you don't want them to take your bishop. And they normally go bishop b7, and it continues. And I have no idea. Perhaps I ought to have tried to find the theoretical status of this, but... My feeling is that, is that the boys have spent many hours doing that. My point is that the self-pin, really. 
and this is one game, knight g7, king takes, if pawn takes, queen h5, there's some very unpleasant things that can happen, this apparently is winning, I think if knight d3 check you probably go king b1 a lot of the time, you don't take it, because then black gets a tempo to get to c2, so it's actually quite extraordinary just how violent this position is. I think here my engine says that, I mean, it's not a position for people really, is it? My engine says this is plus equals or something. Again, I'm not really taking that much notice. Here black's a piece up and, well, white's got some comp, but nothing very obvious. Because black has defended himself. B takes C3 was a mistake. Take. Uh, that's clever, I think. Pretty threatening. What are you threatening? G6, maybe? G6 must be quite a threat, mustn't it? Rook to there, king to there. How does this work? Rook to there. Check. And he resigned. His knight takes queen f7 is mate, and will actually resigned here. And now knight takes rook. Queen takes check, king king h8, bishop d4 checks splat, or rather checkmate in two more moves. So that was also very nice. And I had one more of these, the same position um, with bishop d5. Because there are quite a lot of these. I found 20 in my database of 3 million games. So there are probably another 20 in Megabase or something. So, you know, it's been played quite a lot. Not a position you'd play if you didn't know what you were doing. This is quite fun. Now, h5 is interesting. Knight to there. Bishop to there. Queen to there. Knight to there. Takes. You have to put the bishop in the way. Didn't realise that immediately myself. And the claim is that this is... Well, white has good compensation for the material is what is what is what my engine says basically which i can believe i mean you know it's always very hard to tell isn't it you'd have to think about it which i'm trying to avoid scandalously really because i feel you know this is such an engine position that well okay um what actually happened was this and white gave perpetual check in the game Edouard Istratescu, French Team Championship, Pau, uh, 2012. That's quite a pretty way to end proceedings, I feel. Um, so that is what occurred. So now, um, I'm going to again suggest that if anybody knows of any nice self-forks, especially where pieces self-fork against pieces against units other than pawns I couldn't think of any but that's maybe just because I'm dopey then please tell me and I will um, publish them at a future date I don't know if we don't know if we'll do more bottle and forks or you know some spoons who knows well spooning isn't actually uh, an activity on the chessboard is it or shouldn't be um, so okay um, my next column, it's now the 15th of January, so my next column today, so the 16th this is coming out, the 30th it, there won't be a column, and February the 6th uh, 2022 will be the next one. So I hope you've enjoyed this, I enjoyed finding them and trying to weed them down to some reasonable number of extra examples. And yes, please do find me some self-forks. Okay, I'm stopping now. I'm just going to check again. We're on. We are on. Okay, and then we're off. Nope.